Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to performance test a Lambda. One of the reasons I like Lambda functions is that I don't have to worry about infrastructure. And if I do, I have a nice little API that's written in the language that I write my code in. A nice side benefit of that Lambdas have is they're really good with burst traffic. What burst traffic is, is if you have a ton, hundreds, thousands, millions of people going to your website and or accessing your servers all at the same time. So we're not talking about hitting the site all day. We're saying if something amazing or crazy or horrible happens and everyone and their mom goes to CNN all at the same time, that's what burst traffic is. It usually slows down servers or crashes them and starts cascading failures that prevent other things from working. But Lambdas don't have that problem. So we're going to blast it with a 3,000 users tonight and show you what happens when we do that. Now, there's other performance testing frameworks out there. There's JavaScript, there's Artillery. For Python, there's Locust. Erlang and Elixir, there's Sung. And you can write performance tests in any language you want. You don't have to write them in the same language. So tonight, we're going to use Gatling, which is written in Scala. Scala is a functional language rather than an OOP language like Java. And it runs on top of something called the ACA framework. The ACA framework is a simplified version of Sane. uses the actor pattern. Actors are a more efficient way of doing threads and they scale really, really well. But more importantly is that those actors can emulate real users for us. Even if you don't do distributed tests where you have more than just one computer like I have, it's a very efficient way to emulate real users. So you can see what happens to your code and your server and your application when you start blasting it with a lot of traffic. A lot of interesting things happen when you do that. So what we have here is a Scala file and it's called basic simulation Scala. It has a domain language based around requests. So we're just gonna hit our API gateway here and we're just gonna do nothing but a get request. That's it, we're just gonna go there and do it. We're not gonna do anything fancy or go anywhere, but we are gonna do 3000 users at one time. So we're not gonna ramp it. We're gonna say all at once, ready, go. Hit the button at the same time and see what happens. And notice, I don't even care if my land is up. I'm just gonna run it. Lean requires that you have SBT and Java JDK in your machine and all that jazz. I ain't gonna do any of that. I'm just using Docker because I don't wanna install that. I just wanna make it work. I don't wanna hear it have this whole, it works on my machine and it's configured wrong. Heck with that, so I'm gonna use Docker. I have a shell command here because the Docker allows you to provide what code do you want that Docker container to run, which is my user files that has my Scala code in it. And where do I want it to put reports? I have a folder right next to it. So this project has everything I need, so I'm gonna run sh run sh. It'll go ahead and run that Docker container. I've already installed it, it just has to boot it up. It'll then look in those directories, find my Scala code, attempt to compile it, say, all right, which of these simulations do you want to run? Ours is just the basic one. So when it boots up here, I'm going to hit zero to choose this, that one. It doesn't need a name other than the default, so I'm going to hit enter. And it doesn't need a description, so I'm going to hit enter. It's going to spawn all 3,000 of those actors. And at the same time, hit the button to go to our API gateway and blast our Lambda function. And then it'll generate a report at the end, which we can take a look at. Now the report that is going to generate here in the terminal is kind of hard to read. And also be aware that I'm being throttled by my ISP, my computer's got latency, so it's not going to be as fast. So a lot of this latency you see from these requests are not Amazon, they're actually my machine. So let's go into the results here. And we only have one report, so let's go into that. And we'll open up the index.html, which is a high charts, which shows all of our data from our simulation. So the majority of requests came back in less than a second. That's pretty rad. And you'll notice that's a pretty linear process. Every tick here is a second when it goes. So let's take a look at the, the console in Amazon and see what it says about the Lambda. So we'll click it. Normally you're looking at EC2s and you're afraid, is my server running here? I don't care because I know it is. Go to monitoring and see how many invocations happen. The ones that I've done earlier this evening and we've done another 6,000. So you can see the request, but here's the mo most amazing thing about this is that the max any of them took was 100 milli six milliseconds. The average is two milliseconds. So that's the average of our Lambda. Normally when you blast servers, they get so overwhelmed, it starts slowing down. Even if you have like a ton of servers behind the ELB, we don't have that problem here because we got an army of EC2s ready to run Lambda functions and that's all they do, that's their job. If you go into CloudWatch and look at all these logs that from all these same requests, the great thing in here is you can see that it's only taken about 18 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, and that's all we're getting billed for. You get billed for, I think the first million requests are free, as long as they're under 100 milliseconds, and then every other million after that's 20 cents, give or take, based on you know how much memory you give and how long your Lambda function happens. So if you make fast Lambda functions, it doesn't cost you a lot, which is wonderful, but more importantly, they support burst traffic. They didn't break a sweat serving 3,000 requests. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you performance test your Lambda function, or any function, really, 
using Gatling, which has a domain language to kind of model user behavior. Put those users in an actual actor, which is kind of like a thread, but a more efficient way of writing code for it. And if you do it in distributed fashion, you can scale it very, very well and really blast your server with a lot of traffic. Performance tests yield a lot of strange bugs. So it's a great way to test your stuff, but also prove that your Lambda functions are very resilient. They scale very well. They also scale very well against burst traffic.